Thank you. I had that shirt made and uh, so perfect. Well, good. Well, we, we're going to have a, a, a large crowd today. Um, okay. And again, I know I mentioned this earlier to some of you. Go ahead and ch chat in whether you're whether you're watching this live on Facebook because we're streaming it on multiple pages or you're on the Zoom, go ahead and chat, uh, type in where you're from. So I know the chat feature is working and that's the same chat feature that you'll ask questions to Leslie, my assistant's checking questions and we'll, we'll do some Q and A at the end. But uh, I'm honored to have the president of Keller Williams Luxury uh, on Leslie Akers. I've known for a few years, she's amazing. She does amazing things and she's really, uh, taken in a, a strong luxury program already that Mike Brody and some others have done a, such a great job with and uh, made it even better. So uh, thank you for taking time. I know your your schedule's busy. The other day I called you and your voicemail was full and you said your voicemail was full because of you, you've had so many text messages. So I'm like, wow, you either need more data or you're smart and you purposely aren't getting more data. So, so welcome. Yeah, yeah. I just... I hate that knowing you got a, a full voicemail. I hate that. You know, I, I, I too have vo voicemails that are full a lot and people have to remind me. So uh, again, there's some people that purposely don't set up a voicemail or they don't mind it's full, but I don't like it either. I think it's mm -hmm. poor customer uh, service personally, but. Uh, hey, Michael. Yes. You know, something I will share. Do, do you know that if you, have you noticed that I change my voicemail every single day? You, yes, you do. I have noticed that. That is something I have done since 1993. But yeah, that's, I, I like it personally. I don't do it because I have a little ADD and I'll probably forget to do it. And people are like, hey, today's not Friday, today's whatever, Wednesday or, or vice versa. Uh, but I learned that from a guy named Joe Stump by referral only going back. He was my first coach, if you will, in 2000. But I think it's great. I think it's smart. It's it means that you're on top of things. Um, so if you do that, like you do, kudos. I probably would mess it up though. <laughs> it's a discipline, but I will tell you, I forget sometimes on the weekend and when I do it freaks my friends out because they're like, what's wrong? Yeah. You know, family. You're yeah. so used to you doing it for mm -hmm. what, 17 years now, huh? A long time. So Mark Benson's in, we got people that are all chiming oh, in. So we got hi, people everybody. that saw you and, and Carl's bad. Um, we had, uh, we got Boca Raton, we got Dallas, Granite Bay, Sarah Jenkins. Uh, we got Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. Oh, hi uh, guys. So we have, uh, uh, I, I'm gonna butcher this name, but Anand Thakar saw you at commercial, KW Commercial Summit in Carlsbad. Oh, oh. Um, so <laughs> some great questions. So good, so keep, keep them coming. And some of you that are chiming in on Facebook Live, that's fine too, as I mentioned, my assistant is, letting us know what your questions are. So first off, Keller Williams, Keller Williams Luxury, uh, tell, give us a, just a, a 10,000 foot view, if you will, on um, Keller Williams Luxury and, and maybe what some of the uh, price points. One of the things that we always teach agents for our designation is we define luxury, it's all relative, and we define luxury as home prices that are three times the average sale price for your given market. Now we know some brands define luxury as a million dollars and above, um, certain, you know, certain brands define luxury differently. Uh, maybe we can start out and um, if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, how Keller Williams defines luxury. Is it a broad stroke across or is it market driven? Well, and thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Well, first of all, Keller Williams Luxury International is the boutique of the largest real estate company the world has ever seen. And we're really proud to be able to say that, and it really sets our luxury specialists apart. So I would say luxury uh, to us, we do it by price points because we represent luxury, not just all over the United States, but literally all over the world. And we put a minimum price point, very similar to that of uh, the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing and and uh, who's who and luxury, all the different big players. And that being, because we're so large and we serve all the luxury markets, there's a minimum basis of 500,000. Okay. What we're looking at is more of the top 5% in each local market, okay? So it's okay. higher than the norm, but it would depend on your market. And okay. it's 
thing with our new technology, you'll love this because you and I have had many conversations around luxury. And by the way, I love your thumbnail. Uh, you know, uh, two times the average is high end and three times is luxury. And you know what? That's pretty much spot on when you look at your luxury market because price point in some markets of a million really isn't even luxury until you get up over, right? And so Correct. it really depends. But you've got to have standards that you can build on. And so we, with our new technology, we are actually going to be coming out with in just a few months, the ability to tell our associates by zip code, <laughs> by zip code, what is the top 10% of that market and what is the top 5%? Oh, that's great. Yeah, because it, it does change, right? And it does. Uh, you know, defining luxury, you need to know your numbers. That's one of the things we teach agents is understand their local market, understand trends, but also know your numbers at your local market. And um, it looks like you guys have the technology behind you when Keller Williams that you'll be able to do that by zip code. And yeah, the um, your program will be able to do that you know, automatically. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so helpful. And, and in some markets, because you might take a listing in your market and in your zip code, what is luxury might look different than just in a different zip code, uh, just around the corner. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, not to use your luxury signage in certain areas, you don't have to guess at the price point. I, I think it's going to actually magnify the luxury market share that we actually have. That's great. That's great. Um, and, you know, there's people that are live streaming this and, and they're looking to break into luxury and perhaps they haven't sold any high end and luxury homes. You know, any words of advice for, you know, an agent, a team leader uh, that, that doesn't sell luxury, but they're looking to break into? Absolutely. And we want you to break into luxury and not be afraid of luxury. Um, and I've heard people say it's the same thing, only you add more zeros. And I don't agree with that either. So, um, but what I would tell you is some great things to do is educate yourself. And I found helpful when I was breaking into luxury. And by the way, I can't let my hands show too much. My nails look horrible. Uh, <laughs> One of the things I recommend you do is go to a builder supply, right? Go to a stone warehouse. Go learn the different types of stone. Speak with your custom home builders. Find out what the latest trends are uh, in HVAC. What sear is big right now? Why, why do they do the trim they do? What's the finish on the wall? What All those questions, don't pretend to know them if you don't ask the questions and get the answer, right? Find out the differences, uh, become very product knowledge based. Go and find out the differences in stone. Like behind me, this is a solid limestone with a messy mortar over it, very Fredericksburg Hill Country. Uh, find out what the difference is, what those things are called. And so the more knowledge you have, the more comfortable you'll be approaching the luxury listings. And I still think one of the very best ways to start breaking into luxury is start holding open houses in a higher price point. But you've got to understand the product that you're representing, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you walk in and go, oh, and by the way, look, there's granite, right? Or look, there's marble. Sure, sure. So, well, yeah. And you don't seem to, you don't want to act like you've never seen it before. Makes right. sense? Right, yeah. So, want that product knowledge open houses and I think one of the quickest lead sources in luxury is a luxury expired and because there are more overpriced luxury listings I think than than most listings so that's another great way to break in and the last thing I'll mention on that is you need to also mentor with somebody find your luxury specialist and mentor with them. They've got tools that not everybody has, and it will increase exposure. Listen to what they call things. Understand the vernacular around luxury, and uh, know your numbers in the market. A really great advice. So just to circle back on a couple of things that Leslie said, and again, type in your questions. If you have any questions for her, whether you're on the Facebook live stream 
or on the Zoom, type your questions in. But a couple things that I want to recap that were really good golden nuggets you shared mm -hmm. is you said when you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. When you're more confident, you're more likely to maybe attend that broker open in that that you know Westlake or that zip code that perhaps is you know in that top five ten percent for your your market. Uh, you, you're more likely to maybe ask a team you know somebody on your team in your office if you can sit in on their open house or maybe mirror them and and go on an appointment with them. Those are all some really good um, points that you made and um, so great so so those and and you so you mentioned open house you you, you mentioned understand understand the materials uh, you know stop by the builders talk with the builders try to understand what trends are um, you know don't necessarily fake it to you make it but build build some knowledge right I mean and if you don't know the answer when a consumer asks you know, be honest and let them know, you know, that's a great answer. Excuse me, that's a great question, Leslie. I'll find out and, and then get back to them, right? Do what you say you're going to do. Right, right. Uh, any words of advice for, you know, we have team leaders out there with different brands or boutiques, um, maybe some franchises, but anybody um, that is looking to formally launch a luxury division, uh, are you for that or are you against that and, and why? I'm for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm strongly for it. And any of our friends on here know me know that because it, it's something that sets you apart. And as you form a luxury division in your market center, this is going to be run like a committee, but it's not set up like a committee. So in the world of Keller Williams, we have committees, right? We have committees around growth, education, culture, and they're awesome. And everyone's included right? Everyone's invited to participate. When you have a luxury division, it's meant to be filled with the luxury, the qualified luxury agents in your office. And then they come together and this gives them their peers that they can mastermind with, that they can share wants and needs with, and they can literally learn. You want to bring value to your meetings once a month. Bring in a local developer. Bring in a local stager. Find out the latest trends. You want to always be bringing value to your business. And then position yourselves as the top producers in your market because you are. Mm -hmm. And so should be a, something that's of value to the members in it. And then if you are an office manager or a team leader in our world, what you want to do is leverage your local luxury division to attract luxury talent. Because I tell you, most offices don't have luxury divisions. Mm -hmm. So we have an opportunity to highlight a specialization. This brings structure around it. Okay, and what you will find is a concerted effort that will bring more mind share to that group and in turn more market share and more market share creates more market share for every associate in your office. Yeah, that, that's a great point. We actually just released a, um, a I have a video blog. We just released a new episode yesterday talking about launching a luxury division and and I had a great conversation with a a broker owner of a small boutique, which I won't name, and they, as broker, as, as leadership, as ownership, they're a flat fee type of company. And for them, they didn't understand the concept of why should we have a luxury division? Because it's not like, you know, agents are on an 80-20 split and we'll make more as ownership if the sale price is higher. We just want transactions. We make transaction fees. And I told them pretty much the same exact thing you, you said is, you know, when you have a strong luxury division, a couple things happen. One, for the rest of your agents, their conversion will, will increase because guess what? Your marketplace sees your signs in front of yards. And so there's that respect factor when, you're, when your brand, you know, is doing very well and they own market share for the high end and luxury it helps the rest of the agents whether they qualify for luxury or not and it also helps recruiting better agents and retaining better agents absolutely it it does and uh mind share is very powerful my yeah. share it was interesting. Our luxury division, um, I had a very, very, very productive market center in South Lake, Texas. And at the time we had uh, about 600 associates and about, not quite 600, high 500s, anyway, huge. And uh, we had at the time about 23 to 26 in their luxury associates. 
but our market share was so strong and our mind share was so strong, our whole market center was considered the luxury office in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So it's, it's interesting what Mindshare can do. And by the way, those folks also closed almost a billion dollars worth of real estate. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Mindshare, having, you know, I, I use that as foundation, the mindset, right? I mean, we get yeah. kicked in the shins in this industry. You log into Facebook and, and a, a close friend, maybe someone you sold the home to, they just, hey, we just listed our house. And guess what? They didn't list with you. I mean, that stings. It should sting. It should feel like getting kicked in your shins. And if it doesn't, you might have to think about a different career. So it does happen. It does sting. But you got to pick yourself back up off the mat, right, to use a, a wrestling analogy. And, and so Lisa Hayes once said, be careful how you talk to yourself because guess what? you are listening. So we have to consistently build ourselves up even more so in this COVID-19 quarantine period that we're in right now, Leslie, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, there's, there's some memes going out there. There's a lot of funny things out there about, Oh, there's going to be COVID-19 babies in nine months. Well, guess what? There's a lot of families struggling and there's going to be, oh. unfortunately, some families breaking up because you know, that the quarantine people, the stress level is too much, whether it be financially or just the kids are driving mom or dad nuts or, or what have you. So having the strong mindset and be able to hit reset and start over, um, you know, if you had a bad day, just like, a, you know, I know your father was a football coach, you know, it's like you, you lose that tough game or you have a bad quarter or, you know, you, 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 you miss your block, you got to go back up there the next time and say, all right, I'm going to get the guy this time. Having short term memory is really important to stay positive and work on that mindset. So. And it's okay, Michael, when you, and when you say that too, um, and it's okay if you're having those feelings, all right? It's, it's, but acknowledge that that's what you're feeling, and then you've got to make the conscious effort to change what you're thinking. You really yeah. do. And we all have things, right? I, my, my dad, uh, recently we um, had to place dad in a memory care community and, and thank the good Lord. He's just literally right around the corner from the house. We can see the lights, you know, from oh, really good. Good. Right. good. Thank goodness. Yeah. And we yeah. can't see him, right? And so I could stay focused all day long that I get to go by and, and wave in his window and hold up a sign and hope he knows we didn't just leave him. Um and there are those days where it takes you back, you know, and you're like Dad, blame, or, you know, and you just have to shake it loose and sure. say, wait a minute. Thank goodness I can go away. Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness he still recognizes my face. Thank it, 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 it's, it's, it's a perspective, you know. I, I know yeah. you can't see it, but it's, it's, it's the glass half empty, half full, right? It's, yeah. And um, you really, you're right, but but be authentic with your with your feelings, right? That there's days mm -hmm. you're gonna have bad, there's days you're gonna have good. There's hours, you know, it sometimes fluctuates hour by hour depending on you know people's hormones and, and what have you. Yeah. And Michael, here's the thing, and it, yeah, he knows me. I have hot flashes. I'm a whoo. Uh, <laughs> but and here, but here's the thing. It's not just us having these feelings. Our clients are having these same emotions. So, you know, you really come from a place of genuine empathy because we're all dealing with COVID. This, this is a whole different deal. And this isn't just a shift in the market, okay? And we've been trained and preparing for a shift for a while now, okay? Now, the, and the market didn't seem to be responding. It was in different parts of the country, trust sure. me. But at the end of the day, this COVID deal, unfortunately, this COVID uh, put us right smack dab in the shift. So mm -hmm. it was a jolt, um, quite frankly, to bring the shift to mind. Mm -hmm. Great point. Uh, let's piggyback off. You talked about checking in on your clients, right? So you're talking about you know high net worth individuals, high end you know clients, buyers, sellers, luxury clients, whatever you want to call them. You know, any words of advice for those that are watching on uh, what, what you would recommend to, to your team, to your top agents uh, for their current clients or, or prospective clients? I, I would. I would say, first of all, and, and I've held some masterminds, they're going to hear me say it again. Um, I think, first of all, is being authentic and genuine and reaching out with a genuine message of just concern, touching base. Uh, and not overplaying that either. I, I call it the Miss America 
uh, pageant spiel. Don't, they don't need to hear how you're trying to save the world. They ask about them and how they're doing and gosh, I'd like to know your perspective. It isn't just your time to tell them what you know. It's really more of your time to ask them how they're feeling and then get their opinions. Uh, most of our clients are very savvy and, and very successful in the business world, and I would want to know their opinion. That, that's, that's a great point. Finally, now getting enough time to start seeing a, a trend or two, um, but it's taken a while, right? We've just seen what we've seen. What I'm seeing more than anything right now is the market seems to be uh, pushed with a paused button. Not a panic button, but a pause button. And so to be able to have those conversations, and I think the conversations you're having with your clients will actually strengthen your knowledge base of what's going on in the market. Uh, that's, a, that's a great couple great points there. So again, if you're watching this on our Facebook live stream, uh, type in your comments, feel free to share the live stream. What better way to let your clients and your database know that iron sharpens iron and you're learning from the head of uh, the president of Keller Williams Luxury. We got Leslie Akers here. Type your questions in and I'm seeing some of your questions and I'll make sure we ask these of Leslie at the end. So thank um, Mark Benson. I saw yours, Lori, Salvador. Um, so keep the questions coming and we'll have some dedicated time here in a few minutes. Uh, in your opinion, Leslie, um, when the shelter in place is removed, you know, fill in the blank here. When the shelter in place is, is, is removed, the agents or team leaders, broker owners that will be successful are those that blank? Well, first of all, those, those that have the right mindset and see the opportunity in front of us. We're, we're getting ready to, to move. And, and again, we have acknowledged COVID's horrible, all right? And many people are going to be sick or pass. It's going to be, it's horrible. I just, I just found out my uncle yesterday. So, and he doesn't have the best health to begin with. So but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I know. So we want to acknowledge, acknowledge that. But when we're talking about the business side of the other side, uh, for those of us who've been through a shifted market before, like myself, um, we, are, we are stepping into one of the greatest opportunity time. We've been waiting for this shifting market, okay? This is an awesome opportunity. So for those that have the right mindset and see the opportunity, you're going to thrive. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't, it's going to be difficult. So you need to tap into the training and, and get and mentor with someone that has the right mindset because um, you need to be lifted up into a different level of thinking. Opportunity is now, now get, this is where people make their fortunes, by the way. This is a time your clients have been waiting for, okay? The ultra high net worth, they purchase based on value. Is it a good value to them? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need to be looking at that opportunity. The shifted market doesn't mean this is all of a sudden going to become a horrible market. Now, if COVID keeps going on longer and longer and longer and longer, yes, it is impacting business, right? Mm -hmm. And the money flow. What I'm seeing right now in the ultra high net worth is folks that were working major, major deals or getting ready to put all these huge numbers together are having to hit the pause button because their businesses aren't moving forward or this deal isn't moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I have to put in perspective when they're looking at what is a great value, and I've used this example before, is perhaps they find an opportunity. Let's say there's an oceanfront estate that hasn't been on the market for 20, 30 years, and that family says, you know what? Now that we've been through all this, our, our market is still strong. We really don't need this anymore. Let's consolidate down to four houses instead of five. And I will tell you, and they may price that now instead of at 20 million, so they price it at 18. Well, the high net worth individual is gonna say, wow, that's a great value. Number one, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to even get that property. Because remember, they're buying based on want. Right, not right, need. not need. Okay, yeah. so you, you've got to be able to look at things differently. There's a real opportunity. Understand that if you've been in a market that's had very 
very low supply and high demand, we're not seeing it, any evidence so far of those markets shifting down drastically in price because we were already having a supply demand issue. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, in markets like New York City, where uh, where our associates have shared with me, their market was already off twenty percent. Okay, before COVID. Right. So uh, we just want to keep things in perspective, but. Uh, to fill in the blank, I would say the right mindset and see the opportunity ahead and then to be able to articulate that to your clients. Oh, that's a great point. Great point. And um, I had a training with a group out of Italy this morning and oh, they, wow. asked a, they asked a, a question about video. They said, hey, you know, this one agent says I do these really nice videos. They're edited and and. Uh, I'm hesitant to do any videos from the house that, you know, don't have professional background. So I, I told her, Hey, if you've been to our blog and you see, we have really nice backgrounds and compared to what, you know, is our makeshift at our house today. I said, good is good enough. People want authenticity. If you're bringing value today, uh, I had somebody on our podcast yesterday that talked about for every value you bring to your market, place today in other words to, to potential clients current clients it's basically 5x it, it's it's the equivalency of you bringing five times that value when the market was good and everybody was going about their daily lives so if you can bring value now in a time of uncertainty you're positioning yourself even more as an expert a leading authority and you will attract opportunities and michael that goes back to knowing the market so you've got to educate yourself and and, and really know it. And I will say for all of you out there who've been in the business a long time, like myself, now is the time to lean into to what sets you apart as your value proposition. You wanna mention your experience. Mm -hmm. And this is a time, and if you haven't been in the market that long, that's okay too. If you've nailed it and been very successful, you need to tap into your track record right now because uh, I think experience uh, trusted, experienced, result-oriented, those track records are going to mean more now moving forward than they have in the last four to five years. Good point. And if you don't have that experience, you know, leverage your, your team leader, leverage yeah. your office. Hopefully they have, you know, some success stories and of course get their authorization to do so. A couple more, uh, a couple more questions I have, and then we're going to open it up. We have some really sure. great questions coming through. Um, so if you were to move to a new state, uh, if you said, you know what, I'm going to pick up and leave Texas. Cause I know you, you live down in the Austin area. Uh, but you're, you're from the Dallas market originally. Uh, mm -hmm. If you were to pick up and move to someplace else, um, what what would you do or what words of advice would you have for agents that are you know, brand new to a certain market? They don't have a local database. What would be the first you know, two to three things that you would do to establish yourself as a top luxury agent? Okay. Well, and, and the first thing I would do is I would, and, and it, to me, this makes a difference. Am I moving because I want to? Or am I moving because I'm kind of being forced to move? Because that, that could still maybe influence things a little bit differently. Sure, sure. Like if I was doing it by choice, I'm looking at a market that is red hot on, uh, just on fire, or I see an appreciation point that, that is um, being set up that I want to be a part of that opportunity. So I would just say though, regardless, what I'm going to do is before I make the move, once I know that's where I'm going, I'm going to visit there and I'm going to start learning that market. Okay. I want to drive it. I want to drive up and down. I want I want to visually take note of everything. I want to visually take note of the market. I want to see who's where. I want to see which demographic I fit in. Uh, if it's the luxury market, I'm looking for luxury lifestyles, right? I want to center myself around those markets, around luxury lifestyles. I want to understand what drives that market. And then I'm going to learn where I'm going to tap in based on what drives the market in that new area. The other thing I'm going to do uh, is the first thing I'm going to focus on are expires. I have first thing I'm going after. Low hanging fruit, low hanging fruit. Absolutely. And, and then the other is I would be building my image, image marketing. Now there's right now, we've got to be careful that you're cutting out the non-essentials, right? Mm -hmm. 
But if you're going to get a rate of return, if I'm moving into a new area, I need people to know who I am. By the way, probably the first thing I'm going to do is, is even before I move there, go through my sphere, notify them that I'm going to be making a change there. Who do they know there? And I want to meet with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to know somebody. Yep. And that's how I'm going to meet them. And then from there, I'll start tapping into those relationships and then call on those expires. I'm going to put together a direct mail piece that speaks to my track record and experience. Okay. <laughs> and start building my image in that space. That, that's, that's great. Great advice. Great advice. Um, last question is uh, we call it when at home, when at home. Yeah. So as we're shelter in place, some people are used to going to the office every day. Um, those that are creating makeshift, you know, backdrops, makeshift uh, home offices, any words of advice uh, to those agents, those team leaders that are having to adjust to this new, uh, you know, this, I don't want to call it the new norm, but this COVID-19 shelter in place uh, in most states and even, you know, all globally, right? I was talking to a group from Italy today and they have shelter in place there. So any words of advice to, to, to be successful, you know, whether it be a yeah. spouse uh, with your significant other as a parent during this stressful, unprecedented time that we're in? Yeah, and, and that is such a great thing to bring up, Michael. So first of all, let's look at this as we're not just staying in place, right? Um, and, and by the way, I read a great Tony uh, Robbins quote on this about the words we use and how they impact us. And he was talking about shelter in place and, you know, safe in place. And those were all words that were used during different wars, right? Uh -huh. Negative connotation. He said, what do we think about it as being grounded? How does, gra not grounded as a teenager, I hate it, <laughs> but more grounded, meaning feeling firm with the, with the floor beneath us. We feel okay, solid and comfortable and stable, right? In yep. place. Now, working from home, being in real estate forever, um, I like it. I had an adjustment when I went to the corporate office. Y'all, honestly, I'm glad I'm not driving 600 miles a week, okay? Just to and from the office. So, uh, but when you're at home, I've even, I, I actually live with my, my mom. She was with me. And um, I had to remind her, I'm not home. I'm at home working. Right, right. So you're going to have to create some boundaries that are friendly boundaries, but they're boundaries or you won't get things done. It's just hard. The other thing is you need to get up and get dressed. I have found that if you have on your robe and you have on your house shoes and you haven't gotten, for me anyway, my, my war paint on, and <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't feel awake. I even put on my high heels, right? Yeah. yeah. So get dressed. You're going to the office. Yeah. It's right down the hall. The other thing is this, especially when when you are going to be uh, carrying on Zoom calls uh, or FaceTime or whatever with your clients, when you are facing interfacing with your clients digitally. You need to make a conscious effort of noticing everything around you, okay? And as a matter of fact, I'm glad y'all can't see what's in front of me. I scrambled and threw everything onto my bed. Okay? Yeah. But I didn't want that to look like that back here. Sure, sure. Because it's still a first impression. Yeah. You need to look professional. You need to look put together because you're still creating an image and a perception. So I would say that. All right. Okay. The other thing is you've got to have boundaries. Uh, and, and these are hard, I think, at home. I don't know about y'all. I'm getting Zoomed to death. Right? <laughs> so what I would say is you still need to have cut off hours. Okay. It is hard to stop working. And so have office hours. Set those expectations with your family and set those expectations with your clients. And then it's set them with yourself and, and then you stick to them and you'll be more efficient. But I, I think we have the great, I feel like we have an advantage because as realtors, we're used to working from home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it's yeah, hard I mean, for a lot of people. It's definitely a, a, 
an adjustment for many. So you talked about getting ready. You know, when I played college football, uh, there was a, a senior, Heath Garland. He was a wide receiver, and he it used to drive him nuts because we used to get our, our, our shoes all, they called spatted up, taped up, looking good. But I believed if you look good, you felt good, you played good. And mm -hmm. same thing, you know, you're talking about, you know, getting showered, shaved, get yourself going because there's something on that mindset, you know, that you're going to be more productive. And uh, you talked about cleaning up your desk and that kind of stuff and and uh, just getting getting the mindset right so very good now a couple people uh, again don't forget type in your questions if you're on the zoom type in questions if you're on one of the Facebook lives my my assistant Kara is checking those right now and um, again you can share this Facebook live as we still have some good questions to answer so let's get to some of the audience questions uh, so um, in no particular order you know Catherine Rain from uh, the Hi, Miami uh, Boca area. For um, so Catherine says, first off, I love you both. So thank you, Catherine. And Aww, Leslie's awesome, you. isn't she? She says, um, how? Oh my goodness, she's so. She goes, how does Leslie always pull off to look so fabulous? So that's <laughs> that's, that's what she first said. Um, but her thank question you. was, uh, in her market, she's got very low inventory right now. Every great property it seems like it's got five offers on it. What steps uh, do you recommend to get more immediate listings in this current environment, right? So uh, door knocking uh, in today's current environment, probably frowned upon, you know, she didn't ask that, but you know, so you, you have to adapt, right? You have to be able to shift, right? You have to shift right. and adapt um, in this difficult market. So for any agents that are in a market where there's low inventory and multiple offers, what do you recommend to those agents that um, to to attract more opportunities, to attract more listings uh, when they're, they're far and few between? Right, and and you know we forget that, right? We we forget, and the public certainly forgets that. And uh, supply and demand, right? Low inventory. Inventory. So be thinking about it like this. What kind of messages can you be sending out right now to create urgency? What could potentially happen after COVID? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What could potentially happen? Well, if it goes on too long, more people are going to think twice about where they're putting their money, right? Uh, and other things like this, will they be able to qualify for the loans? It's getting harder. Yeah, yes. Chase, Chase just narrowed, you know, 700 on their credit score, 20% down. That, that's what I'm talking about. So we've got to be informed, pardon me, we've got to be informed. And, but to be able to relay that message to potential sellers, like, have you thought about selling right now before the market starts adjusting further, right? Before the market, they don't understand what shift means. Uh -huh. They do. Uh, before it starts adjusting, right, because of all the unknowns, because the interest rates right now, quite frankly, are at an all-time low, uh -huh. great time for buyers to be getting qualified. If you've been thinking about selling, we would probably want to get on the market now while inventory is low and interest rates are low before people start doubting the market and we have an influx of inventory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When the supply is high, Right. And demand starts decreasing, so do the sales prices. Let's beat the curve. I would start looking for those opportunities for beating the curve is a is a you know is a term right? They're talking about the curve with COVID, the co and the curve, the curve. So talking about yeah. beating the curve is 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 timely. It's very timely. And then how you deliver that message? Do it video. Uh, Catherine, goodness sakes, you're great on video. You do a lot of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Be using our video brochures, y'all, and mm -hmm. send those out, right? You're looking to go for the penthouse, send those out. Mm -hmm. uh, people are curious right now how all this is going to affect them. And we know how supply and demand works. So we want to tell that story. And then you have the facts behind it of what could potentially happen. None of us have a crystal ball. Yeah. But this yeah. is it looks like yeah great great point the other thing i might add to that catherine is if there are properties getting multiple offers 
uh, leverage those. Of course, yeah. um, I, I get postcards in my mailbox from agents in my market where they maybe didn't sell particular homes in a particular farm in a particular neighborhood, but they're sending out monthly or information as far as, hey, these three homes just came on the market and they disclosed, right? Keller Williams, Cobalt Banker, XYZ, uh, you know, multiple offers or sold above asking price and bring value. You can leverage other people's property. Do so. Check with your broker owner and make sure you're doing it from a compliance standpoint the correct way um, and that so th those there's a lot of things you can do stay visible right bring value Catherine you're doing some great things with your your uh, your digital mm -hmm. your virtual open mm -hmm. houses leveraging the successes you've had I think case studies and testimonials you can never have enough of those uh, in this particular market I just put a home on the market Tuesday of this week for 919,000 it was on with a, uh, an agent before me they had seven showings in over a year we got our first showing yesterday in two days. So I'm going to leverage and tell that story like, hey, in the Chicagoland market, in that price point, it's what we call a buyer's market. There's a lot of inventory that hasn't been moving over the last few years. So I'm going to leverage that and tell that story like, hey, if you're thinking about waiting to put your home on the market, you know, here's why now might be a good time to actually put your home on the market because your competition isn't. So, you know, telling that story. Can I add one more thing to that, Mark? Yes, please. Here's the thing, to, especially with what's going on right now with COVID, all right? What is the first thing people are thinking about real estate? They're thinking, oh my gosh, it's gonna tank. And it's, and it's not necessarily, right? right? Uh, I will tell you, things are going to adjust, meaning a seller should be getting fair market value and a buyer should be paying fair market value. Neither uh -huh. are taking each other's head off. But I think there's so much misinformation. Your opportunity there is to explain the market of the moment and how it could pinch, potentially be an advantage to them to sell now or advantage to them to buy now. Uh, great, great point. Great point. Uh, again, keep your questions coming. Some great questions. Um, Don Carpenter asks, when things get normal and you're doing Lux open houses, do you do anything special that day? Snacks, drinks, gifts, and do you do anything special to advertise? Does door knocking work? Um, so great questions, um, Don. Mm. Um, there's a, an agent that I'm good friends with out of the Scottsdale market, and she specializes in that multi multi million dollar properties. And she, you know, the most the the, the objection that she normally would get from the owner is like, hey, I'm worried about safety and security and hey, opening up my house in this price point, you're gonna have a lot of unqualified buyers. Well, that agent does a lot of open houses on her multi-million dollar listings because of two reasons. She manages her seller's expectation up front. So she tells the seller, Mr. and Mr. Seller, we might not get much activity at all, but online we're definitely gonna get more clicks and more views than the other guy down the street that isn't doing an open house. So worst case scenario, we have zero people come through Sunday's open house. I don't look at it as a complete failure because guess what? We got more clicks and some more likes and some more saves, which usually equates to more qualified showings. The more qualified showings and eyeball traffic we get on your property, the higher probability we do get offers, plural. So uh, yeah. that's, that's kind of my thoughts on the open houses. But yes, you definitely want the experience to be better because some of these people that are coming through your open houses they, they might have to sell first and they haven't even started interviewing real estate agents. And guess what? The experience through your open house versus the guy down the street was much better, is more professional. You knew the home, you were prepared, you looked the part, your follow-up was better. Any other, Anything else to that, Leslie? Yes, and you know the market stats of that area, right? You're the expert. Know the numbers. Yeah, not just to look at that house, you wanna be the expert. Now I will say this, that a quote normal market, which I think we're finally gonna start moving into one, which is exciting. That Y'all, that's the best time to be in real estate. I cannot wait for y'all. Oh. Uh, but for a quote, normal open house, I think the more you layer your activities, the better. If you're gonna do an open house, you need to have it out everywhere. You need to be announcing it uh, online. You need to be talking about it on Facebook. You need to put on the MLS. You wanna send out invitations. And I would door knock my neighborhood that that's in, and introduce yourself and let them know you're going to be hosting one and how much you'd appreciate their opinion. 
uh, I just think the more you promote it, but you're also showing everyone around you how you work. And the more you layer your activities, the more uh, effective your activities become and your results will be better. That's a, those are great points. And um, I'm reading questions from both my smartphone and the desktop here. So forgive me if my eye contact isn't up. Uh, so Leslie, great, great answer there. Um, so the next question I have is from our good friend out of the uh, Silicon Valley, uh, Maria. Uh, Maria, she just sold a professional athlete's home. I can't Yay. mention who, but Maria is going to be on our podcast. And she said, Leslie, any good ideas for time management during this time? And you mentioned, I think, some, um, but any specifically time management suggestions for those with kids, those without kids? Um, you know, my wife, she posts this, the kids' schedule uh, for, for distant learning on the refrigerator. It wasn't given out by the school, but she created playtime and free time and screen time. And um, any suggestions that you might have, Leslie? I love that. I, I would just say, um, set your appointments for whatever it is. If, if your appointment is going to be for your lead generating or follow up, or any of those activities, get those things on your calendar first and then plan everything else around it. But right now, and, and at least I can speak for myself, I am having to work strictly from a very strict schedule. Um, so I, I schedule my, my calls on the East Coast uh, or all the things scheduled first in my day, uh, and then the central part of the United States, and then West Coast. And, and I've got to be real, real careful about that because if I look up, all of a sudden, uh, again, I, I've got an office in San Diego. So uh, if I'm not careful, I'm at the on the phone at 11 o'clock at night, you see, because everything's two hours behind me. Right. And, and then I can't get back to my East Coast folks. So sure. you, I would just say be purposeful. The best advice is be purposeful. Uh, I'm old school. I, I need to see it in writing. I keep th that big white thing on my desk is a ginormous calendar mm -hmm. uh, that I can doodle and schedule on as well as on my computer. I have a schedule on my phone. I have a schedule. I have a backup to the backup for the day. I think you have to be, uh, I hate to say it, it's almost boring you've got to be so scheduled, but I think you'll find you're 10 times more effective the more scheduled you are. Yeah, good point, good point. I have a lot of visual reminders that drives my wife nuts, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, all right, so we got a couple more questions. I want to be mindful of your time, so let's say, you know, we'll try to about another 10 minutes here. Um, so, um, Harry um, Shakora asked, yeah, what combo. do you, yeah, Cabo. What do you recommend for those international markets um, that have that are completely shut down, including closings with the notaries, like here in Cabo San Lucas? Real estate agents are not considered essential, so we're, we are stuck at home, blowing up phones. But you know, Harry, and you're doing a great job because I'm getting everything you're sending out. Um, what I will tell you is right now, people understand. And it, here's, here's kind of the difference too. Even though you're, you're not essential, meaning you can't be out in it, even where we're essential, we really shouldn't be out in it, right? Unless we have to, and we're having to do it with so many precautions. So I, I want you to kind of flip that mindset a little bit that you're at a disadvantage because uh, even though some are essential, it's still basically right now a digital workplace, okay? This is a digital workplace. So um, just know that stay on the phones, blow them up. You're going to get more digital. You really are. Uh, and I would say, especially where you are, uh, the things you put out bring so much joy because your, your pictures are so beautiful, right? It's Cabo. It's fabulous. And, and maybe what you do is... Uh, you get your listings from your friends in other countries and other areas and be able to share their uh, listings as well because people enjoy seeing things that are unique and, and different. And, and listen, you know, more than ever, photography is more important than ever. The quality of the photos, the quality of the video, the quality of your message, um, it will set you apart. But Harry, I know it's tough and, and we're all, especially being non-essential, but I'm going to tell you, it just changes a few things. You, 
you still have a huge opportunity. You really do. Tap into your feeder markets right now. Okay. Yeah, that's, I was just going to say that. Look at your migration patterns. Where are yeah. your buyers coming from? You know, let's use the term feeder markets, migration markets. You know, those terms can be used interchangeably. But do your research on that and then reach out to some of those referral partners, strategic alliances, and let them know. Because I know you mentioned in one of your commentary that you do some of the 3D photography and, 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 and some of those virtual tours. And and remind them why, you know, Cabo St. Cabo St. Louis, Lucas is such a great time, a great place to buy and a great time to buy right now. And, and so this would be a good time to, you know, do some of your organization, you know, update your database, your sphere, some of those things that when the market's hot, you're too busy to do anyways. Great. And point. sharpen your saw, right? This is the time to dive into our live streams, learn, go back to these basics, tap into the shift. I mean, I, I just love the getting the, the extra time to dig in to some of these classes, but you're doing a good job and people, especially after this, are going to want some wide open spaces like that amazing blue ocean that you show all the time. Hey. Yeah. yeah, it sounds beautiful. Um, I have a question here from Lori Stinas. Um, she just closed two uh, new luxury builds where she represented the buyer. What's your best advice to leverage those just solds and where? So in other words, she represented the buyer. How can she leverage them? You know, like during COVID and, and she didn't ask after, but maybe we can share both. You know, um, what a win, right? Because I think people just inherently, they can't help it. They are thinking that things are shut down, right? and that things aren't moving. I was looking at a piece that David Voorhees put out uh, this morning on KWRI, and it talked about in Austin, Texas, where we had uh, 799 new listings, and it was only 100 off. Mm -hmm. So when you see those facts, so I would come probably get permission from your buyers and, uh, and then see if they'll shoot a testimonial video, right? And then what if you put that video out to your database? And it says something like, another family happy and well served during this scary time. What are some of the, the best things that we experienced during this process? Hmm. You're not hearing enough bad. Right. Let's do something good and exciting and celebrate and, and uh, kind of uh, experience that feeling of, wow, it must have been exciting to buy that house and why they moved here and just remind people of the process. People, Yo, this is an exciting time. They're not realtors, right? These are people that are buying and selling and home ownership. And it's an exciting time typically in their lives. So let them share that excitement and then spread that excitement. That's great advice. You know, I might add to that. Of course, every state is different. Check with your broker owner. But uh, you can leverage your sales when you represent a purchaser, at least, you know, in Illinois, with just sold postcards. Now, I like to disclose, disclose, yeah. disclose that, hey, we represented the buyer, but turn that into a positive. Like, hey, we might have other buyers if you're considering selling, you know, during this corona time period or, or post corona right. you know we might have a buyer we just sold you know these two properties and we're looking for others or whatever it might be so leverage that in print yeah. or digital with facebook you can do just solds and ad works and and uh home snap there's a lot of things you can do from the digital marketing standpoint as well oh my gosh speaking of that now this may not work this is just thinking out loud right I love it storm but what if you did like a virtual welcome to the neighborhood right and so I, I don't know I used to have just bought signs because we represented a ton of buyers uh, my team did and so we had just bought and so I would always ask my buyers can I put a just bought sign in the yard for the first few days after y'all move in and then we'd have a welcome to the neighborhood party that my team would host and so what if you did that virtually or digitally right and uh, welcome them, and we toast, welcome to the neighborhood, and, and they get a visual of folks, right? Yeah. And then maybe show a, a garage with all these horrible boxes that need to be unpacked and say, we're looking forward to meeting you, and we need help with those. So can't wait to meet you here in the neighborhood, whatever. But enjoy it and let them feel a part of it and are, are more open to things like that right now than they're going to be later. Great, great ideas. 
Our good friend Mark Benson says, Leslie, can you share the KW Luxury Lore Report for February? That's from Mark Benson. Mark, I wish I was more prepared with that in front of me. What I can tell you is, is that we are averaging over 2.3 billion in sales a month right now. You know, we ended last year over 31 billion in sales and we're already kicking off January was the strongest January we had. February was the strongest February we've ever had. But we're averaging over 2.3 billion in closed volume so far. That's great. Uh, we have Mauricio here. Uh, Mauricio is the new regional leader for luxury division in Mexico. So welcome. Ah. He said to say hello. Um, a couple more questions here, and then we'll let Leslie go on with her busy day. Uh, my good friend Johnny Mo, Johnny Mosillo, um, he says, what is your strategy for staying top of mind awareness during this time? And I think some of it's kind of repetitive. I think we answered that, Johnny. But, uh, you know, bringing value, being visible, you know, video, uh, picking up the phone, right, and being authentic and just checking in on people. But, Leslie, uh, you want to answer anything that I maybe not, didn't cover? I, I think you're spot on. And But I think, you know what, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So, um, when you know your market and you can share what's happening, uh, reach out and say, I thought you might be curious. And, you know, I know we've always talked about the market and here's what's going on right now. And here are some po potential thoughts for you. And then I would lay those things out. Like if they're an investor, I would lay out some potential opportunities that should be coming on the market. I would let them know what they're, when I say feeder market, I'm talking to you as an agent. When you speak with your client, you call them migrational markets. But I would tap into what the, your feeder markets are doing, especially for an investor, and talk about the upside to that and what you're seeing, right? And the opportunity. Remember, Gary Keller said, and I like this, talking about luxury, he said, isn't it a luxury when you own something you don't need? <laughs> now really? how do you look at your clients man that is that's good i'm uh and by the way i'm typing in uh, some free resources here because i want this to be valuable for those of you that are on here from different parts of the world different yeah. parts of the country so we have some free resources there where you know we provide uh talking about michael lafito and our company we have podcasts we have vlogs we have a lot of free content that we've created and it's not possible uh, to bring on guests like Leslie and, and future guests uh, without it. So we've uh, this is our fourth luxury lunch and learn, Leslie. Um, and uh, next week we have some amazing folks. We have Teresa Kenny, who is the, the Miami Board of Realtors CEO. Wow. They're the largest uh, real estate board wow. in the U.S., second largest in North America behind Toronto. Um, next Wednesday, I have Craig Hogan from Keller, uh, excuse awesome. me, Cole Banker. Uh, he's a great guy. You and I have spoken highly of him. Um, yes. And then next Friday, I have Brad Inman on. And then the following week, uh, I have the world leader from Fiopsi and others. Um, so again, if you guys know somebody that you'd like to be on our Luxury Lunch and Learn, right now it's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at, at this same time, 1230 to 130. Uh, we've got a lot of requests and a lot of uh, people that we like to bring on here so we might even expand it in the future Monday through Friday but Monday Wednesday Friday same time same place we're showing replays of this so if someone wanted to join today or caught the, the beginning and not the end or vice versa you can uh, see replays we post these to our free Facebook group I've included the link in the chat here uh, but if you have any questions please reach out to me, send me a note. My email is michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And let me just check to see if there's any last questions, but I don't believe there is. Um, so Leslie, thank you so much. Uh, technology was on our side today. And yeah. um, it's always a, a great pleasure. Appreciate what you're doing for the industry. You got a servant's thank heart you. and uh, just keep, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. I miss everybody. Good to see you. Thank Thanks, you. Leslie. All right, take care guys. All right, bye.